right, and so uh, this morning we're at the Manitoba Agronomists Conference, and uh, we had a discussion on a couple of different myths um, that some farmers and agronomists have come to you with. Let's focus on canola. Uh, we had a discussion about the effect of pollinators on yield. Can you tell me a bit about that? Yeah, and that discussion came about uh, based on questions I received from a couple farmers. Um, they had been told by an agronomist uh, to take mix in an insecticide with their fungicide because insecticide is cheap, so at the very least it couldn't hurt. And the question that was posed to me was, are there other things we need to be considering and is that a good suggestion? Uh, one of the things I like to stress is there is what we call a pollination effect on canola. Uh, canola can yield well on its own, but it will yield better with pollinators. And there's been several studies looking at how much better, and generally we tend to use a level of about 10 to 15 percent. Now it's going to vary depending on uh, how close you are to an apiary and the stage of the crop and a lot of different factors, but that 10 percent, 10 to 15 percent is a very general guideline. Um, and there have been studies that have shown up to 46 percent increase. Uh, although they were in situations where hives were right in the field in very almost artificially high levels. But the bottom line message is uh, there's other costs other than the insecticide cost. There's this pollination effect. Uh, the pollinators could be increasing your yield another 10 to 15 percent in canola. So you have to consider that into your decision making. And plus uh, insecticides that um, that are very general in nature, which most of the ones used in canola are, also kill natural enemies which keep populations of things such as Bertha armyworm, diamondback moth, and other insects in check. And a couple years ago we did a study on diamondback moth. We found that in a lot of fields up to 80 percent were parasitized. Their population that year had crashed late in the season. So there's always other factors you have to consider. So the, the short answer to the question is um, my advice to the farmers was uh, don't be take mixing an insecticide in just because it's cheap. Uh, if there is something in the field at very high levels, very damaging to the crop, it might be good advice. But if you have nothing close to an economic threshold, you could be doing a lot more harm than good. Now we also talked a little bit about birthing, bertha armyworm levels uh, in the crop or by crop. And if levels are very high in one field, if, if you can expect that neighboring fields would have similar levels. But uh, can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, uh, again, that stems from a question uh, that I received. If my neighbor has high levels of birth armor and the planes are spraying in my general area, shouldn't I be spraying too? If they've got high levels, shouldn't I have at least relatively high levels as well? Uh, the short answer is no. And the reason is when birth armyworm females are out laying their eggs, they are going to be more attracted to some fields than others. One of the things that attracts them to a field is stage. Uh, we know that crops that are in flower, when the females are actively laying their eggs, fields in flower are more attractive than fields that are pre-flower or are, are coming out of flower. So that's one factor. Uh, so if that timing lined up well for your neighbors, they may have a lot of birth of army worm, you may have very little, and we've seen that before. There's landscape factors and other things as well that will influence their egg laying. So it's not just a given that if um, your neighbors have a lot, you will. You're best to go out there and check. Your populations may be quite low and once again, if you don't need to be spraying, there's an insecticide cost plus the pollination effect, the beneficials, and the other things that need to be considered.